Good morning. Welcome to Light Embassy, taking his glory to the ends of the world. This morning's message is titled, The Canaanite Christians. The Canaanite Christians. And our team scripture is taken from the book of Hebrews chapter 11 verse 4. I am reading from the New International Version. By faith, Abel brought God a better offering than Cain. By faith, he was commended as righteous when God spoke well of his offerings. And by faith, Abel still speaks, even though he is dead. Again, by faith, Abel brought God a better offering than Cain did. By faith, he was commended by commended as righteous when God spoke well of his offerings. And by faith, Abel still speaks, even though he is dead. Who are the Canaanite Christians? The Canaanite Christians are the do Christians. Christians who present what they feel and think should be nice to God. They are carnally minded. This should appeal to God because it appeals to our senses. That is the Canaanite Christians. The understanding of grace is that God so loved the Christian that he comes to his level and accepts the Christian the way he is. You just believe in Jesus. It doesn't matter what you do and how you behave. God has accepted you. These are the Canaanite Christians. They bring their crooked ways and understanding of love into Christianity. They have not truly understood the meaning of repentance. The word repent is a two-syllable word. And is joined, is formed by joining the syllable re and pent. Pent means top. Pent means top. When you say pent, it means that to be at the top. That's pent. It means top. And that's why I have words like pentagon and all those. Pent means top. Right. Pent means top. And hence, to repent means a return to the top. A return to the top. So when God says repent, it means that return to the top. God is always at the top. God is always at the top. He is the top person. He is always at the top. Everything about him is the greatest. He is the reference point. He is the standard. He is at the top. And calls man to his level. This is the meaning of what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5, verse 48. Be ye therefore perfect. Even as your father, which is in heaven, is perfect. Means be at the top, just as your father is at the top. What is God's love? God's mercy and love is He not consuming man for his evil and granting him the opportunity to repent, an opportunity to return to the top. Paul said in Romans chapter 2, verse 4. Or despise that the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. Why despise his goodness by continuing to walk in sin? The Bible says that the goodness is supposed to lead the person, any person, to repentance. The goodness and the grace and the love of God is supposed to lead, pe lead people to repentance. It means lead you in returning to the top. This is the same thing that Peter said in Second Epistle, the chapter 3. When he says that God is not slack concerning his word, his promises. Right? He's not slack. He, but he's long-suffering. Waiting that man should repent. Right? Man should repent. So, God's long-suffering is not that. And God's love is not that. Oh, I love you. So I'm coming to your level and accept you the way you are. Go on walking in sin. Jesus has paid it all. No. It's love. Contrary to what they have been brainwashing people, God's love and grace is, I'm patient for you. Change and return to the top. That is what repentance is about. That's, that's what grace is about. 
right who is the canine church is the church that manages the things of god according to their own wisdom the carnal wisdom they learned from school and have been taught by the world they run god's church by the world system what effort what insult and shame the bible says that the wisdom of this world is foolishness to him how then do you go back to the world and take the wisdom of, of that world, which is foolishness to God, to run his church? <laughs> Sometimes it, it, it's, it's amazing. They don't read the Bible. They don't, they don't allow the Holy Ghost to teach them the word. You go to the world to bring their wisdom to run God's church. When God tells you that the, the world, their systems, their wisdom, their ways of doing things is foolishness to him. How then do you go to the world? And, and, and pick their ways of doing things and bring it to the church. And when things are not working in the church, they don't understand. God is against such people. It's wrong. They use God's oblations and offerings of worship for their own purposes. That's what the Canaanite church is about. Go to their churches. The offerings that they collect on behalf of God, the oblations of sacrifices, all forms of oblations of worships. They take the offerings and then they use it for what they think it should be used for. So sometimes even they go into the offerings of God <laughs> and take money from them to prepare fika for the church to, to eat, to prepare food. They can even take money from the offerings and then organize a party See, the church will come and eat. Oh, oh. You see, the Bible says at a time of ignorance, God wins at. But you have to be careful. You see, you have to be careful. You, you, you don't understand how how evil it is. It's the, it's, it's the same. Maybe, let me explain this for them to understand. If God being good, if they will come into contact with today's message, some of them will come, then they will change. It's no different from when Nebuchadnezzar went into the temple of Israel, took the vessels which were consecrated to God, and later his son, Belshazzar, drank from that vessel. It's the same thing. What happened? A sign, a, a hand appeared. And that day, that night, Belshazzar died. That's the same, you see, that's the same thing they do, but they, they don't get it. But it's just that in the New Testament, you see, the grace of God is there so in abundance that he gives time for people to change. But they don't understand. It's a snare. Wisdom says it's a snare to eat what is holy. Do you know those when you say you have you have you have given offerings to God? Do you know what that means? Those offerings that the children of God brings to the church, it belongs to God. It's for God and his work. And for God and to anyone he has stipulated in his way that it should go to. In his way, he said that he should go to the priest and also for the ministry. So even the only people who could even eat from the offerings where the in the tithing were the priest, because the priests are the one God has chosen to, to, to stand in that office and manage the church for them. And apart from that, the rest should also be used for the ministry work. But you don't take from God's offerings and Offerings that you, the church themselves, they brought to God. And then you use that same offerings to, to make a party cook for them to come and eat. Do you get, they, they lack wisdom. They, they, they don't get it. How can you do that? How can you do that? So you gave the offering to God. And then you, you took back from that same offering and you ate of it. And yeah, they do it, they do it, they do it. And they don't, they don't understand how evil that is. My goodness, they don't get it. They don't get it. And also, they won't humble themselves to be led and taught. And they go on working their ignorance. You, you, you see. They go on working their ignorance. Because most of these really have not been called. If God has not called you, then God, God's grace will not be with you to direct you in things. So, they are, they are blind people leading them who have not been called. They are pastors just because they went to, to school and learned some, some uh, uh, Bible terms. That's not what makes you a man of God. A man of God is called by God. It's called by the Holy Ghost. It's consecrated and appointed into office. You see. So there are many things they do. They do. <laughs> they do. It's so evil, but they don't even understand that it's evil. That's even the problem. 
you don't even understand that it's evil and you can't collect correcting them to their uh, proud and then be angry but if you don't know what is right won't you love the person who is come to correct you so that you do the right thing so that on that day you'll be rewarded how do you want you know you should be happy for someone who comes and teach you wisdom so that you will correct your life and 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 do the right so that one day when your your lord meets you be rewarded like other christians be rewarded you don't want they will always be bent as paul talks about it when other people's works works are abiding so anyone who comes and teach you wisdom you rather should be grateful to that person you should rather be grateful and thank god for that person if you have wisdom that's what you do you see and that's why wisdom says that she's correct a wise man who will love you i say don't do that to your scorner he'll hate you he may even beat you up say it wisdom they use god's oblation and offerings of worship for their own purposes no wonder they run into debt and become insolvent how can god's church run into debt this even a thing that she even they should ask themselves god's church you said you are running god's church and god's church the right way and the ch- god's church run into debt and become insolvent bankrupt that should tell you something that should tell you something god's church if we really govern and 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 and, and, and uh run by god's wisdom it will never run insolvent sometimes if they have committees and there's a committee that manage the the finance and the financial uh, 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 rudiments and, 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 and things of the church. It is wrong. The one who should manage, who should, who should direct how money is used in church is the minister, the shepherd. It's not the, any human committee, it's the shepherd. Sometimes people say that, oh, we don't, we don't, we don't, we don't trust the shepherd. That's why you, you don't trust. Then why are you following him? If you think that, that a shepherd, your shepherd is a thief, then you, see, you don't contradict yourself. God doesn't say that because you think something, do it the wrong way. No. You read the Bible. It's not any committee. It's the shepherd who is mandated to direct everything in the church, including finances. That's God's way of doing things. But they don't, they don't understand these things. They, 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 they have not been taught. Who are the Canaanite Christians? They are the Christians who understand the Bible more than Jesus himself. Yes. These Canaanite Christians I'm talking about, they understand the Bible even more than the Lord himself. Even more than the, Jesus, the Lord Jesus who is the Word himself. They understand the Bible more than Jesus. Because they have their own definitions for love, faith and grace. To them, love means that, or if for you to love uh, the flocks, or to love people means that, or you talk to them always smoothly you talk to them softly or love to them love doesn't rebuke love doesn't discipline love doesn't correct <laughs> so they, they even love more than jesus himself oh man are you wiser than god do you know love more than jesus read the bible jesus said in roman in revelation chapter 3 to the lord this says whom i love i chastise and correct says whom i love i chastise and correct read the old testament God, his dealings with the, with the Jews. He says that he corrected them. Sometimes even he punished them because he loved them. That's what he, he said. In the New Testament, Jesus said to the Lord, he says he was chastising, correcting them harshly. Harsh rebuke. Read about Paul the Apostle. Sometimes how he, he harshly rebuked some Christians. Do you understand love more than Jesus and Paul? Jesus, the Lord himself, and also his servant Paul. I, Paul wrote to the Thess- Thessalonica brethren and says that there are some some of the brothers who were not working according to their prescribed order. He says that shame that those people. That's why he says shame. He says that separate yourself from them so that they will be shamed. Do you understand love more than Paul? Do you understand more love more than Paul? So so they do things to so that uh the the flocks will see them as sincere and loving, but they are serving men and not God. The question you have to ask yourself, what does God think? Like the fact that people are applauding for you does not mean God is applauding for you. That's the most important thing. Who 
Who is the Canaanite pastor? He is the one who does what he does for the applause of men and the flocks. To him, he has done well because of the plaudits of the flocks, the applause of the flocks. When the plaudits of the church fill the air, then it means that he has done well. Such people serve men and not God. They are after the glory of men and not God. And God sees their heart. What matters is God's mind. What does God think about it? If the flocks knew better, God won't put you there to shepherd them. The Bible says, By faith, Abel brought God a better offering than Cain did. By faith, he was commended as righteous when God spoke well of his offerings. And by faith, Abel still speaks even though he is dead. By what? By faith. Abel's offering was pleasing because he gave God what God wanted. See, that is the secret. He, Abel gave God what God wanted. There's much more about this because it's linked to the redemption of Jesus. But you know, the, the bottom line is Abel's offering was pleasing. It's not, it's not because vegeta, it's not the vegetables or the, 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 the secret is that Abel's offering was pleasing because he gave God what God wanted. And not what he felt should be pleasing to God, unlike Cain. This is why it was by faith. For so then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. You can never have faith if the word of God has not been released. So the Bible says that the offering that Abel gave was by faith. It means that God has said something to them. They have heard something, the word of God concerning something. But he, he they didn't able obey that the word. Cain didn't obey. Like at many Christians, they do things the way they feel like, not guided by the way. That was the same way Cain was. And the Bible says that God was displeased with Cain's offering. So beloved, so what you learn from this morning message is that things are not nice because it appeals to the senses. No. Things are not pleasing to God because they ap it appeals to the senses or people are applauding for you. It doesn't mean anything. The Bible says that he is not approved, he who commended himself, but it is he that God commends. So the, the thing is, what does God think about it? What does God think about it? That is the most important. Are you doing God's way? Are you saying his mind? That is what is important. You see, for instance, in ministry, as a, as you don't just go preaching. Because, yeah, you see, it's not because you preach in the name of God, that means that God will reward you. No, God will only reward those who spoke his mind. Even he lets you know that there are some who even will be condemned for preaching. <laughs> yeah, James talked about it. He says that, that's why he says that not many should what? Should be teachers. He says don't, don't just desire to be a teacher because the teacher received the greatest condemnation. So the, the question, you know what? What you are doing, has God called you to do that? That's the most important thing. So you, don't, you don't just try to do things that God has not called you to do. It's very insultive and disrespectful to God. And when you do that, it comes with consequences. Right? So every everything, you do it the right way. Because God is a spirit. And he that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. For the Lord seeketh sight to worship him. God bless you.